We're going to take a few minutes now to look at a particular physical port that exists on every Cisco switch and router and allows us to connect a PC directly to a switch for the purpose of configuring that switch. Because sometimes, most of the time really, you're going to connect remotely. And we're going to look at some scenarios later where you could do that with what we call Telnet, which you've probably heard of, and then SSH as well. But right now I'm talking about a physical connection, and you will find these lines near the bottom of the config, and I mean usually right at the bottom. And let me just show it to you live, and then we'll come back to the board. And this is a config period, the entire thing, the running config on one of our routers. And some commands, host name you've seen, but that's about it. We're going to be looking at those services later on. And then as you go down, you'll see some information about the interfaces, on the device and not much there because we haven't configured much on here yet but down here at the bottom some important stuff this is what we're looking at right now line con zero and a couple of commands that are not default commands but they're very helpful lab commands I'm gonna fill you in on what they both do in just a moment these are the lines that have to do with remote connections and we will be looking at those in another section right now I want to stick with this physical connection that we're talking about exec timeout with a couple of zeros behind it and logging synchronous but what's that line con zero all about to begin with well that refers to the connection to the console port and if you're connecting physically to the switch this is the port you'll connect to it also happens to be the port that I use for these demos which is why I put these two commands on here now the two commands you saw and the ones we're about to review uh, under line con zero they're not there by default but they are very helpful in lab conditions and yes I will be hammering that home more than once especially with exec timeout exec timeout is followed here by two zeros and let me use iOS help real quick to show you exactly what those stand for I'll move that arrow the first one is timeout in minutes and the next one is timeout in seconds which is not required but usually you just go ahead and put zero zero in there because what you're doing there is disabling the timeout and you might say well timeout from what well what happens here is that the console port will kick you out it'll disconnect you after five minutes of inactivity and in a home lab environment that can get a little annoying as you take breaks or you're off from a device and let's say you've been practicing passwords and you have a password on your physical connection as well and then not only do you have to re-enter but you got to re-enter a password etc just gets a little annoying not the worst thing in the world but setting this to zero minutes and zero seconds disables the feature so you don't have to worry about timeouts because when I'm using live equipment here in my courses you know I would not want to say oh wait a minute I got to log back in again and this password etc etc so that's why I use it here now I strongly recommend you not use this command in production networks Cisco feels the same way I think everyone feels the same way because it does create a security vulnerability there is a reason you want that connection disconnected after five minutes you don't want to just sit in there permanently so again I do not recommend using this command in a production environment now logging synchronous this command will save you a lot of aggravation in lab environments and I mean a lot of aggravation you know by default when the console wants to tell you something whether you know it's one of the system messages we see it just tells you anything it has anything to say it wants to tell you right now because you got to know right now and the problem is right now might just be when you're entering a command and having that interrupted it's really aggravating <laughs> I'll try not to keep using that word but here's what happens I took a screenshot when I took logging synchronous off here and I used a time-honored method of removing just about any Cisco router or switch command, putting the word no in front of it. Once in a while, you'll find a command where negating it by, just by putting no in front of it doesn't work, but it almost always does. It's a great habit to get into. Now, what happened is, you know, I went back to the prompt and I started typing. And by the time I put now I am, and then wham, here's the system message, and then going to type something actually appeared at the end of configured from console by console and not only does that get aggravating but it can actually negate the command that you're writing now if you're entering it and you manage to just keep typing it and you ignore that console message then you'll be okay uh, but mostly it's just again aggravating forgive me but again it's a good lab command to use logging synchronous 
and exec timeout 00 to put those on your console ports. Good commands to know for your exam as well, but they really can come in handy in the real world. Now, speaking of the real world, remember that problem we have with broadcast domains? I'm sure you do. The ones that neither hubs, nor repeaters, nor bridges, nor switches that their default settings could solve. Yeah, that's the one right there. Four hosts connected to a switch directly to their own ports. We have four hosts. We got four ports. We got four collision domains. We love that because we can't have any collisions with this config. But boy, can we have trouble with broadcasts because we have one great big broadcast domain. By default, and there's the key phrase, Cisco switches don't do anything to segment your network logically on a broadcast domain basis. But non-default, they do. That's where virtual LANs come in. Because what we're looking at here, again, by default, is a physical LAN. You know, it's a physical local area network. You got four devices connected to the same switch. And it doesn't matter how many you had. Of course, you probably have more than four. But the thing is, by creating virtual local area networks, we can cut down on the number of broadcasts. We also get some other benefits, but we really cut down on the number of overall broadcasts in the network. We're going to see how coming up next, along with a live config of a VLAN. We'll see you there.